All right, it looks like we're good. I think we got it. CPU at 22%. Fuck that. Hey, how's it going? It's the thing we talked about for months and weeks at a time. It's here. Welcome. We're doing the thing. It's the cool thing. We're going to answer some questions in a minute. And they're already up. And yes, I liked everyone's comment. Fuck off. But this is kind of weird because it's been like six years of, of nothing, you know, like none of this. And what makes it weird now is <laughs> before I could always, you know, do things like pick my nose or whatever and all kinds of whatever the fuck I do off camera. Now I have to be very conscious. I have to be very, very careful about what I do. Let me just, right. there we go. It's out of the way. And my goal is to not do the thing that everyone else always does where you make jump cuts every couple seconds because for some reason you can't. So we're going to do our best to get past that. I'm trying not to be self-conscious because usually it's me clearing my throat or coughing or dying or something like that. So we're going to try and one-shot this bitch. Probably not. So, anyway. I'm recording this now. This is about a week early because I will not have time later. I have two tests this week. I had two tests last week. And then I have to prep D&D on Saturday. And then I'm going to Extra Life on Sunday. So this is really the only day this is happening. Right? So here we are. All right, just jump into it. So we have our mouse and our window. It's super cool, right? I made like the browser window half the screen this time instead of the full screen so we can get past all the... Uh, limitations on space and I can see the recording and this at the same time. Whoa, it's cool. Uh, all right. Yeah. I scratch myself here. I scratch my eye. And hear the crickety crackety creaky headset in the old office chair cuz this is before gaming chairs were super cool. I bought a fucking office chair cuz they're more comfortable. But if I lean back, I disappear. All right, so I'm trying to Oh, by the way, check it out. Right, we got a cool shirt. This is Galactus Kirby. I just punched the headset. He's eating the earth. Had to wear something fun, but all right. Let's do the questions. Dundolo, obligatory. What made you start up a YouTube channel? Let's start there. Um, origin story is I was interested. Actually, I didn't even want to do Let's Plays at the start. It was like seven, eight years ago. I wanted to watch like a Mega Man playthrough. And I found Nintendo Capri Sun's channel. And he had like some Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 Let's Plays on there. And the, uh, at first, I didn't know what the fuck a Let's Play was. And so I saw these videos like... Because I was one of those people, I just wanted to see the gameplay back in the day. And so... When I saw the video, and then the guy started talking, I was like, what the fuck is this? Who, who does that? Who talks over the videos when I just want to see the game, dude? I'm not I'm not interested in that shit. And then actually my I was in uh I was in a League of Legends phone call. No, it's my school. Cuz the school, cuz the wildfires at uh school uh that the school got canceled uh today and tomorrow. So Kind of a sad thing to be canceled for, but gotta deal with it. Hopefully they put those fucking fires out, dude. We're well past wildfire season. Climate change? What's up? Alright. So I was into League of Legends back in the day with all my friends. We played it a lot. It was like season one season two, I wanna say. And there's the you probably seen it, the uh Shinzao video, Xinxiao, I don't know how to pronounce Chinese. And it was by Color Ninja. It's got like 8 million views or something. And it was just him memeing about to the fucking Mulan soundtrack. And screaming at shit. And I found it hilarious. And so did my friends. So we thought that was really cool. And after a couple weeks, like I, you know, he put that out and then he started putting out more videos. And we were watching those videos. I was watching those videos. I subscribed to the channel. And like he would put those out. And then you would put out Let's Plays. I'm like, what the fuck? Again with these fucking things. Who wants to watch this shit? At the time, he was putting up Majora's Mask. And when I was watching it, I was like, I don't... I just want the League videos, dude. I don't want this shit. 
And so after... That sucks, it didn't look like we got very far before we had to make a cap, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, so after... I gave those a shot, I actually found them really enjoyable, especially his kind of Let's Play. It was just this really... just laid back... thing that I started trying to emulate, where you just kind of lay back and chill... and talk, and it's not... this whole thing of fucking screaming and... whatever the whole time, and whatever... I, I don't know, I... Got a problem with a lot of Let's Players, you know? It's a fucking art, dude. You got these people that just, every couple seconds, oh, I have to be super hyper energetic and shouting and, oh my god, oh wow, overreact, oh god, oh, I have a camera now, I can fucking emulate it, right? Like, oh, overreact to everything. Man, isn't this game great? Wow! That's what they are, a lot of them. I'm not about that life. I want those genuine reactions, you know? And so. I really got into those videos, and after watching those for a while, I went, you know what, I enjoy it, that's something I want to do, and so I started a channel. Alright, I forgot, like, I talk way too fucking much, so I actually gotta get through these quickly. I shouldn't say quickly, but I don't want this to be a half hour video. Maybe it should, who knows, maybe it will be. Xbox lineup has been pretty terrible lately, it's true. You ever think of jumping to PlayStation bandwagon? I'm too poor. What are your thoughts on the current state of YouTube? I will extrapolate on this later. I think it sucks right now uh, for multitude of reasons. I think if you're into YouTube for content that requires a lot of editing and prep and I take my the whole the whole shit shakes when I put my hand on the desk and stand or not stand sit there. So I gotta be careful about that. Yeah, so, if you're trying to do Let's Plays and shit, like I am, Twitch is better at this point. And a good example is Epic Name Bro. If you guys know Dark Souls, you know who he is. Uh, Epic Name Bro got up to about 400,000 subs on Twitch. Not Twitch. YouTube. And he hated it. He was just, he started, like, near the last year he actually put effort into it. He was complaining a lot. Especially because of the... The uh, God, thoughts thoughts are hard. The people commenting on his videos, they would just you know be assholes basically. And he didn't like it. And so he went to Twitch, and going from four hundred thousand subs on YouTube and hundreds of thousand hits on his videos, going to Twitch in the first like month. I remember watching him, he'd only have like 400 viewers and about a thousand subscribers or something he was saying. It might be, the numbers are a little different now I'm sure, but back then he said, yeah my first month I'm making more money than I ever did on YouTube and I hate it way less. And I went, wow. Shows how fucking bad YouTube is right now, right? And if you're going the monetization route, that word was almost difficult. I think Twitch is better. Uh, if you want to do content that isn't just live streamable content where it's like I have to edit and I have to plan this shit or I have to go film you know and make stuff or guides or whatever those videos are where YouTube is good because you can't live stream you can live stream it but it's a lot harder because you don't have the power of editing editing is very helpful so um, I don't like YouTube right now and I think Grevic asked about that so we'll get to that a little deeper uh, the rest of it I'll talk about in the longer video. With a lot of games and remakes getting... Oh my god. A lot of, yeah, a lot of games getting remakes and masters. What is a game you yourself would like to see get a remake or a remaster? <sighs> Should have prepped that one beforehand. Um, I can't think of a good one for a remake or a remaster. Because usually they kind of botch those. I think the FF7 one's going to be cool. I'm hoping it is. Especially if they go a different direction. Because people... There are two schools of thought on Final Fantasy VII. We'll take Epic Name Bro again. And the other would be Maximilian. And with the two of them, they both love FF7. And Maximilian is kind of the camp I come down in. Where he talks about... Uh, those just... Turn-based... 
Like, a lot of FF7 is mash fight. You know, they give 13 shit for paradigms and all that, but a lot of FF7 is just mash fight, hit cure, use potion, right? There's no... It's not this huge, deep uh, battle experience. Tactics, that'd be a good one to remaster if we're actually going that route. Uh, but yeah, so I think what they're going, or the way they're going with 7 would actually be pretty cool. Uh, I would actually go a different route and say I want a sequel to Two Human, because I fucking love that game, even though the first one had some issues, for better or worse. I'd like to see that get finished. It's supposed to be a trilogy, and Phil Spencer kind of cock teased us at some point, because someone tweeted him the Two Human 2 poster that got leaked, even though they never made it 2 and 3, and he said, yeah, I've always liked that poster. I was like, wow, do it, please. Please. But Silicon Knights got uh, almost bankrupted by Epic in the countersuit, which feels bad, man, right? So, let's see. And the final one for laughs. Will I ever have the courage to make an LP while my girlfriend is home? Probably not. <laughs> uh, she's cool with it, but like I said, it's the thing stopping me, as I've said before, is when you do this content, it's a lot of you're talking to the camera like it's the other person, so it would be weird if there's another person in the room that you're not talking to. And then what if she did jump in, you know? Like, it would break the whole immersive feeling where you're engaging the audience if someone, like, breaks the fourth wall on your ass, and then you have to, like, engage them, and then go back to, like, you're talking to the other person. I just, man, fucking... Ch -ch -ch. Actually, I don't want to touch it. I'm going to fuck it up a little more. Or even more, right? <clears throat> okay. Feeling comfortable. This is good. Water. No. Actually. I'm worried. Because sometimes I drink water and I choke on it. And that's what we're not trying to do right now. Okay. What has been your favorite fan requested game? Hmm. It might be Hollow Knight, actually. Right? Hollow Knight was hella good. Uh. Probably Hollow Knight. V6 was cool, right? I'll give in to that. V6 was a, a cool game. I'm just shit at platformers. Uh, let's see. Oh, right here. So, and have you gotten more into platformers since V6? Actually, I've gotten farther away from them, and it's not because the game was bad. That game was really good, and the music was fucking sick, right? That game was fantastic. I was very happy I played it. And it's weird that I pull away from platformers considering I like Metroidvania games, which have platforming elements, and Mega Man. I love Mega Man games, and those are platformers. But I go away from them with things like Banjo-Kazooie, and probably some other ones that I can't think of, but those are ones that... I don't know, because platformers are all mechanics, and I'd rather have something else going on in the game. That makes sense? What series am I most proud of? Uh, I think... I'm going to split this one in half. The one I had the most fun with was Vagrant Story. And the one I'm most proud of is Too Human. Because for one, I love that game. Two, it was a game I didn't do blind, which I do most of my... Bleh, I do most of my games blind. And people backseat the shit out of me. And so it's funny because whenever I do a non-blind game, I get way less comments. You know, people are like, I can't backseat him. What do I talk about? Man, that was cool. But the reason I'm very proud of Too Human is because... Uh, Two Human was made by Silicon Knights. That was the, the studio. And Dennis Dyack, back in the day, was the head of Silicon Knights. And he saw my Let's Play. I don't think, I'm don't i sure he didn't finish it. But I'm sure he watched some of it. And he said he enjoyed it. And he wanted to use it in one of his videos talking about Two Human as uh, B-roll background footage. And I was so fucking happy. Because I woke up and there was a Twitter DM. And I was like, what the fuck? And I saw the name, I went, there's no way. And I looked, and the, the account was real. And then I read it, and he said what he wanted to use it for, and I fucking... I don't usually get emotional about things. Uh, and that was the one time I can remember. I woke up, it was like 7 in the morning, I texted all my friends that would care. <laughs> and I fucking, like, fist pumped and just jumped in my room. I was so happy about it. Just because, you know, like, a game you really enjoy, creator's like, hey, you're cool. And you're like, 
hey, it's me, <laughs> and used it. So I was very proud about that, and as soon as he did that, the fucking, the video just went like plus a thousand views, so that was really cool. So, uh, what do you call it, virulence? The plural of, vi it's not virality, you know, going viral is virulence, right? So that's, that kind of stuff helps. Oh man, because I'm watching in the capture window that's off to the side that you can't see, it like goes up and down when I do. Okay, how often have you thought about quitting YouTube altogether? I think about it three times a year minimum. <laughs> There's at least three times where I'm like, fuck, what am I doing? And what has, uh, what has stopped me from doing it? Part of it is I hate failure. And so, I don't mind setbacks, because those happen, but to have myself fail at this. I don't even, like, here's the thing. Success is not definable in this situation. There's no, like, I hit the subs, I hit the, the whatever. You know, it's kind of like, are you satisfied with where you're at? And... I have goals where it's like, I want to hit a thousand subs, I want to hit like 5,000 subs, um, and just wherever, I want to see how far it goes before I can't do it anymore, or before it implodes kind of thing, and what is, or, so, those things keep me going, um, one big point in quitting is Twitch, I think about streaming so much, because like, I already have like a small base here and like a couple followers on Twitch. So if I turn the stream on, I would get a few subs, not subs, um, viewers. Like I'd probably be sitting around like 3 to 10, which is good. Most people sit at like 1 to 0. So like I like I have a found I have a small foundation, but I could actually grow from there. And there was a bug that I had with YouTube where when you're streaming on Twitch, if people go to your YouTube channel and you're plugged into each other, it'll tell them you're streaming. And I had a bug where that never turned off. And so anytime anyone opened any of my videos ever, it would show that I'm streaming. And then I wouldn't be streaming, but people would go there and they'd follow me. And I would get like comments and shit, hey, you gonna stream? You know, I saw your thing, but you weren't on. Like, yeah, maybe. So I think people are more interested in streaming than the YouTube, honestly, but Twitch is a whole different bag, right? There's a whole different set of hurdles to get past. But to shortly answer the question, what's kept me from doing it? Just don't want to throw in the towel yet. Uh, so we'll see what happens. How many times have I beaten Dark Souls 2? Probably like five. I beat it a couple, I think I beat it a couple times for the Let's Play. And then I went through it on a couple characters. So I would say like four or five. Oh man. Why is Dark Souls 2 the best Dark Souls game? Why? Like we know it's not. You know what's funny though is the further <laughs> the further I get away from DS2, the more I'm I have fond memories, maybe that's the nostalgia glasses. But I don't <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I mean honestly it's probably Bloodborne. I didn't play Bloodborne, but it's probably Bloodborne. Uh I would say Dark Souls 1 though. It's hard to say. They're all good for different reasons, right? Uh let's see. I don't have a question, but a statement. If you do a face reveal and you don't have the beard, <laughs> I quit. We in there? Okay, I lied. I have a question. Oh, fuck. Have you decided if you're going to do a Twitter, I think this is Twitch, schedule or stream, whatever you're playing? I thought about it. The thing stopping me is hardware. My computer can't handle Twitch right now. And so I would want to... Uh stretch a little bit. <clears throat> so I'd want to be at a point where my hardware is caught up. Like, I need a better computer and I need a microphone that's not a janky headset. Even though the headset shit, maybe it works. It's just, it's too loose and it makes too much uh, background noise. So, the other thing too is when you're small starting on Twitch it's really hard starting out. Like, again, this is the set of hurdles I was talking about. When you have no viewers and you're by yourself, part of growing on Twitch is streaming like six plus hours a day. Usually you want to put in like 10, right? And just grind that shit out. 
but what uh, makes that awkward is you can't stream and have dead time or like dead like silence right when you're doing a YouTube thing like a let's play you can just talk the whole fucking time like no one's there because no one is there yet until they start watching the video that's when the person shows up so you engage someone like they're there and it works out but if you're streaming and there's no one on like no one watching and you're just talking to yourself the same way you do a let's play it sound it looks fucking weird right so it's tough so in that situation i think it's better to have someone else on stream with you like a friend that you're playing with or a friend that's in the house or something and a lot of my friends don't have that time right now like the schedules don't match up so it's tough so uh, my nose is itchy so twitch a little tough and that's the other thing too you do need a schedule to do twitch you need to like I'm on at these times for this long and you have to do that for like a couple years and then hope it's fucking it is tough okay there are definitely games I'd like to watch you play but I never remember what systems you use for your gaming I have an Xbox one a 360 uh, I have access to other stuff like my friend has a lot of stuff that I could use I have a PC and a Wii but the Wii is so old at this point right uh, I, oh yeah, PC, Pillars of Eternity, and Kingmaker. Those would be fun. Um, Kingmaker, I had to stop playing. I hit a, I think I hit a, finally a game ending bug, which kind of pissed me off. Cause I love that game, but that made me sad. Thank you. I do pride myself on being strategic, the strategeries. Uh, those games are tough to let's play because. When you have a very intensive kind of niche uh, video or game you're making videos for, it's tough to reach the audience, you know, like it's a niche audience, and then it's tough to make content for that, I feel like. And I've done a couple long series before, and anytime you engage in a series like that, you're looking at like 40 to 100 hours in a playthrough probably more and that is very tough to consistently keep content for however like up here right however uh, they're games that even though they have the niche audience they're good for streaming so that's why people like Ko are very successful because he's got a good community and he's found that niche audience that wants to watch those games and so he can uh, stream that stuff and then upload it and stuff like that and it works out for him. But yeah, thank you for the compliment. Oi. Funny enough, uh, strategic stuff, I do enjoy those games more at this point because as I get older, my mechanics and my dexterity becomes more and more shitty. Um, I hope you're feeling better, dude. This was, uh, I know it's a tough thing to to go through, so... I know it's been a couple weeks since that happened, so I hope things are good. Do I have any pets? Yes, I have two dogs. Uh, if I remember, I will put a picture of one of them in the video at some point, or I'll put him on camera. His name is Jax, and he's a little cute motherfucker. He's about, like, 8 pounds overweight. He's about 30 pounds, but he should be about 22. He's a fucking fat ass, because I don't walk him anymore. But the other dog is basically Scooby-Doo in real life. It's not a Great Dane, but it's scared of everything. And I don't like him as much. Uh, and we hit the end coming up here. So is that my profile pic or someone else? It's me. What were you doing? Uh, maybe I will... I should. I'll blow that one up too. Um, a friend... Was it? Yeah, it was a friend of ours, I think. Got us into Street Fighter Cross Tekken when that game was coming out. And there's like a launch party in February of 2012. I still have the t-shirt. So I went there, and my friend has a nice camera, and he likes to take pictures. And so I was playing one of my other friends that was there in some cross tech and, and in one of the matches, I think, I think I had a beer. Not that the beer really contributed to anything, but I think that's a beer... I think there's a beer in the screenshot, or the the photo, or whatever. 
but my friend, I think he did something stupid to me or whatever. Like he, he won a match, and I remember, like I was jokingly salty about it, so I made that face, and my friend took that picture when I made that face because he was standing there taking photos for like his hobby photos because he has a really nice camera. So, do you have to make a career out of let's plays? I actually, at one time, this was possible. Like, YouTube was a possible career choice. So was Twitch, actually. I have enough... Um, I have the affiliate boxes checked for Twitch, which means I get a sub button. I don't get paid by it, though, I think. But um, I mean, like, I had the foundation for money on Twitch, and I had the foundation for money on YouTube, and I looked it up. It's actually not illegal to talk about, or it's not against TOS or anything. I guess that's a wives' tale. Um, even though I have a shit level YouTube channel, and I never got past a thousand subs, I forgot to put an S on that word, I made like $500 on YouTube, and that's Elon Musk, fuck <laughs> the pot, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I had that opportunity, and I got fucked by Adpocalypse, um, for you know, a few other reasons too. But, you know, I was making money, I had consistent channel growth, and I could have. I definitely could have. It I don't think it would have been let's plays. It's let's plays are like what you fall back on. They're not usually what grows you. They can be. They work sometimes, but like I said before, I think if you're streaming, I think that's the better avenue in that case. And I think that ship has kinda sailed for myself. Uh, the other thing was Guardians of Middle-Earth. I was one of the big content creators at the time for that game. And a few people who stuck with it and stuck with that kind of content of, like, making guides or those kinds of videos, they did that for other games, and they took off, and they did really well. Uh, so I had that chance there. And also, strangely enough, Guardians of Middle-Earth, which is a console MOBA, you're not aware. That game, that was also my ticket if I wanted to go through on Twitch because I would stream that game a lot. And that game got fucked because the developer sucked, so the game imploded. But every time I would stream that game, I would have like 20, 30, 40 people watching because I was one of the few people that streamed it. And the community knew me. And so they liked watching my shit. And there was a, uh, there was like a little community thing too. And I think. Um, people voted me for that game as, like, the content creator they enjoyed, like, the most. So I was happy about that. And I could have, right? If you want to talk about careers, like, that game, had that game kept growing and I kept making videos for it, or if I went to a different game to make video, like, the same kind of videos, I think I could have done it. But I just kind of, I don't know, combination of, uh, various issues that come up and apathy and losing motivation and all that um, kind of screwed me. Dog! So, that sucks. Yeah, I could have. I think that's what kind of hurts the most is you look at that and go, I could have done it. And because of how YouTube works now with algorithms and monetizing and all that, uh, basically if you're not, if you're under a thousand subs, like here's the short end, right? It used to be I would just put up videos and my channel would grow, right? Because YouTube just wants you to get fucking money and subs so they get money because that's how it worked. And so all I had to do was just keep throwing up content. And over time, I would just keep getting channel growth steadily. And that was fine. And then YouTube changed how everything works and now that doesn't that isn't what gets you there anymore. It's not hard work and consistent uploads. It's... Uh, marketing, like self-marketing and stuff. That's part of the reason I don't think I can succeed on YouTube as it operates right now is the way you get big on YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that are things that I don't want to do. Like, I want to be judged on just my content, not how will I market myself. So you have to be a fucking marketing god at this point and network with people and get your shit super viral and self-promo like a motherfucker and I hate doing that. I fucking hate doing self-promo. But you have to. 
And the people that make that hustle and catch a break, those are the ones that make it. So it's not like it's... I don't know. Plus, I don't really have the time anymore because I'm just too busy with uh, school and trying to survive. If not, what would you like to do? I'm going to school to become a teacher right now because I greatly enjoy it. I've worked in childcare for like seven, almost eight years now, and I've always enjoyed it. So that's the direction I'm going. I've always worked in like after school programs or recreation or tutoring, and I've been good at it. Like I've been complimented by teachers and administrators and people have wanted me to stay, like, the school, even though I'd work in, like, after-school programs, the school would approach me and go, hey, do you want to work during the day for X, Y, and Z? We'll work it out with your employer, or we'll pay you ourselves. You know, like, I've always had that. And so they go, or, and then I go, yeah, sure. So I just went, okay, I have an affinity for this, right? So I better stick with it. It's about playing to your strengths. And I think one really really big compliment that I got was there was a, a conflict at the school I was working at between a couple of kids like we had a problem kid and uh, you know a lot of his own issues home issues and stuff like that and he he's having a really rough day so he kind of had like a little meltdown with one of the kids and I it happened during my like I was an assistant supervisor and my supervisor wasn't there at the time so, it happened on, like, right before my watch. But it, it it's weird. Like, it fell into my jurisdiction kind of thing. But the school psychologist was still there. And she wanted to sit in on when I talked to the kid to make sure everything went okay. And that that's usually good. You want a couple adults in those situations. More heads, you know, in the, the thinking. And she let me do all the talking. And the way I handled that situation with the kid the two kids and the problem kid, like how I talked to him and what I got him to acknowledge and make his resolutions and stuff like that. The the school psychologist after the kid left said, you know, I'm going to school for this, or I went to school for this, and you do this better than I do. <laughs> and I felt so humbled, right? I was like, oh, thank you. I mean, I'm just some guy. That's always That's always what I say. You know, in those situations, I, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm too humble, right? I don't know, but uh, I work well with kids, right? That's why I'm doing it, and I like to be an academic. I like to learn about things, so I want to teach kids about those things. And I also feel that from my experience in school, I feel that uh, my personal mission is school needs to be, like the academic system needs to be overhauled in the USA, it's operating out of like 1940 at this point. And one of those examples was when I was in said after school program at the school, one of the teachers said, you know, someone brought up securing a grant to get some iPads and use those in the classrooms to teach kids with tech. And they said, what do you think about that? All of the very old teachers were against it. They're like, no, uh, no, no technology. They're just going to play games and shit. But the person who's going to be doing it was a young teacher. So he was pretty sharp on the technology. And I think he had a... He got his master's in science technology or like some kind of science tech field. So he was very smart about that shit. And I was telling the teacher, like, yeah, get him the iPads because it's more interactive. Like, kids learn by interacting now. And that's part of, like, my, my thesis, if you will where you can't have kids just sit there for hours and write on a board and talk at them. They don't fucking learn by that anymore. So you need to give them something to engage with because they learn better that way. And I told them, like, you can put Minecraft on those fucking iPads, right? Because, you know, Minecraft teaches a lot of things that old school Legos taught, like mathematics, building, uh, various engineering things. And in Minecraft, you have, like, the... I don't know, it's called like the redstone or something like that. You have circuits. You have actual circuits and switches in Minecraft. So that would teach kids basic circuitry, right? Basic stuff on that. And you'd be introducing it to them when they're young, and they're going to be growing up in a world that is accelerating with technology. And that would give them a leg up. 
So I wanted to, like, I was in favor of it, and I was telling uh, the teacher that was talking to me about it that she should do that. And she said, wow, you made a really strong argument. Why don't you write a paper about it? And I just never did it. Because I was, I was quitting, I think, in a few months anyway. So I sh I, I, yeah, bleh, words. I still should have done it. That's actually a regret I have. Because I kind of uh, missed my mark on something I could have impacted. So, yeah. If not, what else would you like to do? Teach. And if I couldn't do that, um, I would like to work in the government, actually. Like on the Board of Education or something like that, because I greatly enjoy uh, government and the political systems and economics and stuff. Like, I'm getting a... My goal is to get a master's in political science, and I'm getting a minor in economics right now. So, things I have interest in. And if I could not do any of that shit, I'd work in IT, because I have an affinity for computers, and I basically would like a job in that situation where I'd just be left the fuck alone. I just punch in, handle my shit for eight hours, and then punch out. Because sometimes I don't like working with people, because they just cause drama. So there you go. I don't think I missed anything. Oh, this went better than I thought. So, uh, I'm tired. I'm I'm hella tired at this point. I'm, I'm really hungry. I Last time I ate was like 12 hours ago. Nine. Not, not 12. Nine. So... I'll get some dinner, and uh, I have another couple of videos that I'm working on. Uh, this is like the only day I could do this, so this is why I did it. Um, I do want to say thank all of you for your support. Blah. I do want to thank all of you for your support, because even though this is a really small channel, the fact that every time I hit like a low point or I don't upload for like six weeks or something stupid. And then I upload something, and people like show up and they're really supportive and they like my stuff. And I get some really nice comments. I have so many people I could thank. I mean, the people that would get thanked know who they are. You know, you guys are always here. Uh, but there are a lot of people like I got on one of my videos, some guy is a vagrant story on like part whatever, part six or something. Uh, he left a comment that said, This is the best vagrant story let's play on YouTube. And I see that kind of stuff, and I'm like, my heart melts, you know? Because it, just, it, it feels amazing. Because you just have... Most most days I turn the camera on and shit, or the recording stuff on, and it's like, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Just kind of like treading water. It's like, what the fuck am I doing? But I get these nice comments randomly about people, uh, how my videos help them when they're, you know, at work, or... Uh, they make them happy, which is, it sounds so simple, right? But just the fact that something you do makes someone else have enjoyment is, it's a humbling and profound feeling, you know, because you're, I'm not trying to sound narcissistic, right? Because you can't, because it's something I'm doing, so I can't escape the fact that I'm participating in it, in it but just knowing that, right? Because there's so much bullshit that happens in everyone's life in the day-to-day. -day. And so the fact that you do something where they go, man, when... I'm, like, itching my nose with this, but... Um, you do something and they go, wow, for the duration of this video, shit was less shitty. And that's good. I like that. So, thank you. Thank all of you. I think if I got zero interaction, like, limited interaction's okay. If I got zero interaction, I'd probably be like, <laughs> you know, stop making stuff, but, yeah. That's the other thing, too. Like, to go back to Grevik's question, why don't you stop? Or, like, what keeps me from quitting is, like I said before, I know I could do it. I know in my heart that I could do it because I've seen flashes of it. Because I know that sometimes I do make good stuff. And a lot of internet fame or internet success is based on luck. Like, it's hard work, it's dedication, it's good content, and then luck. Because you got to think about it. Like, picture a crowd of, like, a million people, right, where you can't tell anyone apart. And so, like, they're, like, here. And then picture a platform where everyone else is, like, here, and there's, like, ten people up there. Your job, when you're 
not being noticed on YouTube and Twitch and shit like that is you're in this spot where you just look like everyone else and your goal is to work so much harder that you like climb on their shoulders and get up here. And then like once you're there and you're established, it actually gets easier. Like it well I should say it's a, uh it's its own different set of challenges at that point, but the hard part's getting established. And once you're established, it's like as long it it's hard it's not uh it's not hard to tread water at that point. Growing further is difficult, but once you get there, it's pretty hard to fall off, and I think that's like a really good goal, but you also don't want to be satisfied with that, right? You can't be satisfied with uh, sustainability or um, like a certain level if you want to be really successful in this uh, medium. So it's like, once you get sustained to a sustainable level, that's good. And then from there, you have to be like, okay, now that I have my foundation, how do I push that to the next level? How do I get to like, you almost have to be competitive. How do I go from like, you know, once I made it to the top 50%, how do I get to the top 20? How do I get to the top 10 from there? So you have to be competitive. And even though I don't, I may not seem like it, I am actually really competitive, but I've kind of lost that drive. Like as I got older, it's a little weird. So, um, oh, that's what I was saying before. Like that's that's part of what doesn't stop me is I know I can do it because I've seen my content do well. Like I uh, I shit on Destiny a lot, but in Destiny One, back when I enjoyed the game, one of my videos got picked up by Bungie because I fucking tweeted it to one of the people, and they put it in their newsletter, and I got like an in-game reward, and I got like a honorable mention for their video section that they do. And the video got 100,000 hits, and I was getting messages from people like, Hey, can I use your video? Hey, do you, like, want this business? Whatever the fuck. Like, some of them were really scammy. I used to get a shit ton of, like, these quid pro quo kind of uh, business arrangements where they're like, Yeah, if you subscribe to our service, we'll advertise you. Like, yeah, I'm not paying money. Like, that's the other thing, right? To part of getting successful is also you have to... I'm getting tired. That's why I'm leaning back. Ah. Yeah, so part of uh, success is you got to spend money to make money. So it's like if you want to get big on social media, you have to spend some money to... Because that's basically what Facebook and uh, Twitter do, is they handcuff you at a certain point and go, yeah, if you want to get bigger, you have to pay some cash. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that's good. I could keep going. It's already at 45. I knew this was going to fucking happen, dude. I'm going to... Going to... I'm going to stop it here, so thank you for watching, thank you for your comments, thank you for your support, I love you, and I will be making other stuff, and I'm going to get some fucking food, because I'm fucking hungry, so, kind of feels weird to say this with a face, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.